I'm going to tell you a little story. Am I allowed to tell you a story? Just a little story. Who likes spiders? Thank you. I'm glad there's one among you, because I like them too. And I thought I'd share with you what happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was a busy time for me a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I'd, I'd got, I'm old. I had lots of appointments, hospital appointments and all things like that. And so are my friends old. So they'd got lots. And I'm one of the only ones that drives. So, you know, there was a lot going on. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd got really tired on this particular day. And I'd gone to bed about six o'clock. But well, if you go to bed six o'clock in the evening, you're pretty sure you're gonna wake up really early in the morning, and I did. Anyway, I walked through to the bathroom, and there, there was a little friend. And he was quite a big little friend, sitting in my bath. And I went, oh, hello. I asked you, you can't stay there, because I'm gonna have a bath. So and he asked, I'm going to go and find you a nice big glass so I can take you somewhere safe. So then I sort of toddled off and I found a really big glass and I went back into the bathroom and I said, there you go, Mr. Spider. And I put the glass over him and then I thought, right, and I'm in my pyjamas and I live in a little court and in this little courtyard, everybody can see everybody because your front door stroke straight onto it. So I thought, Right, can't go out in my pyjamas to put Mr. Spider safe. So I had to get my clothes on. So I pulled on the yesterday's clothes, you know how you do when you're in a hurry. And then I, I went back and I picked up Mr. Spider. I talked to him all the way and I said, I'm going to take you somewhere safe and you're going to be fine. And I found a big plant pot and I put him in it. But while I was in there, it was the sunshine was gorgeous. And it was, you know, when it was 30 and 40 degrees outside, it was really hot, especially down in Essex. So I thought, I'll, I think I'll just go for a walk before I get dressed. So off I toddled, and I've got this gadget now to walk with, because you can see I'm a bit unbalanced, I'm hanging on to everything. Um, I've got this little four-wheel trolley that I can push that strengthens my legs and I can get to walk further. So I strolled out with my trolley, and I walked all the way down to our front, and I walked up to the railway line, which is by the coast, and I, thought I, was getting a, I was getting a bit tired, so I sat down. And I'm sitting down, and, and this bench said Bernie's bench, so I said a little prayer, I thanked his relatives for putting Bernie's bench there where I needed it. And then I started to think, and you know how your mind goes? And I thought, oh, I'd just love to sit here and listening to Nicky Gumbel. But it never worked on my phone. And I'd got my mobile phone with me, but I thought, oh, go on, I'll give it a try. And it worked for months. Turned it on, and I got it. And Nicky Gumbel was on, and he was, oh, it was just wonderful. And I sat there listening to him speaking, and, and he was just telling this wonderful story of Esther, and, and I was absolutely lost in it really knowing that God made sure you're always where you need to be at the right time. And I thought, oh. And then, you know when you're sitting there in the warm and your mind floats? I often used to say to the lads in jail, when they were laying in the sun at the break time, I used to say to them, lads, close your eyes. You can be anywhere, absolutely anywhere. Close your eyes, go off to the Caribbean. But I sat there and I thought, gosh, Lord, this is wonderful. And then I really thought about it, and I thought, the last 53 years since I last walked up there with my son, Ellis, my eldest one, in a pram, and it was one of them great big silver cross prams, and I, I walked along, and I thought, gosh, I used to wheel him by Splash Point in the winter. <sighs> <laughs> that was like really dangerous with a high wheel pram and a high sided pram, but he survived. He's Italian. Anyway, so I got, I got, I got back and I was, I was thinking about all this and I thought, Lord, 53 years ago I was pushing our Ellis. What a miracle. How many things have happened to me in that time? 53 years. And now I'm pushing this four legged friend, the four wheeled friend, and there we are. And while I'm thinking about it, I thought, all the things I'd done wrong, all the mess-ups life had led me through, everything. And I thought, do you know, you've been through some stuff, girl. You've made 
big, big mess ups. And all the way, God had been with me all the journey through. And I thought, that's amazing. And I can remember just sitting there thinking, oh, Lord, you were wonderful. You got me through some really, really stuff, bad stuff. And the consistency of God's hand on my life through all those crazy times and the good times moved me for tears. So now I'm this little old lady that's wrecked and crying on a bench. Well, we never know what's round the corner. You just don't know. But the peace that God can give is there always, all through it, even whether you can feel it or see it or not, it's there. And so now, in the autumn of my life, I can say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Lord, I truly love you. Now, I don't know if Mr. Spider is still wondering what on earth happened to him that day when I lifted him out and gently moved him to a safe place from the certain danger. And I'm not sure if he's born again or he even knows his maker and his creator who worked through me to move him. But I do know that he's safer there in that plant pot than in my bath where the baptism would have been very hot water and a very painful end. He, in turn, Mr. Spider, blessed me by getting me to go out in the early morning sunshine where my reflections took on a journey through time and showed me how Father had guided me through what had sometimes been a very precarious life. Now, I look at all of you and I'm remembering, I'm remembering that and reminded what an amazing congregation you are. You're very diverse in age. We've got long young people and babies and elderly ones and ones like me that can't walk very well. We've got all of that. It's all here. And I think this is a fabulous, fabulous church. Absolutely fabulous. And it's this church that supported me through some of my very precarious and difficult and tough times when I was here working in the prisons. And I do think about how old age allows long-term reflection. And those of you that are older, it, perhaps it's a good thing that you can travel back and see what God has done. But then you've got, some of you have got a future in front of you. Some of you have made terrible decisions that have got you in some gross places. And I want to say this to you. You may know the Lord. That's wonderful. And I think quite a lot of you do. But do your friends and do your relatives, do they know the Lord? Is there someone that we should be praying for that doesn't know who God is? Jesus, God is awesome. And the only person that's going to actually make a difference could be you. Because you may be the only person that knows this person doesn't know Christ and you love them dearly and you need to pray them there. Prayer is incredibly powerful. Prayer does so much it gets you out of a mess, but I want to know where you're going and where your friends are going and where your loved ones are going because you need to be praying for them. If you don't know the Lord yourselves completely and in a deep enough way, then, yeah, you need to get there. But I know that I look at the people I love in my life that don't know God and I cry bitterly for them because I know where they're going, and it isn't good. It isn't good. Prayer is vital. You might be the one person. That will, and I know lots of people that are really shy, and they say, well, I can't do this. It's all right for you lot, but I can't do this. You can pray. Can I tell you that? You can pray. 
You can pray that somebody else will speak to them, that somehow that message will get through to them because it's important. It's really important. And I think my job this morning is to encourage you to pray with fervor for those that you love. We need a deep relationship with Father God. Do you know something? I worked in prison for, oh, I don't know, I did 15 years. That was quite a stretch. 15 years. And I have to say, I came across a lot of men who couldn't even think the word father with any kind of affection and warmth and love. And so to think of God as father was really hard for them. That was really difficult. And because of the struggle they were having, sometimes what the first thing they had to do was to forgive. You have to forgive. They had to forgive the person that they thought was so awful and so wicked. I've got this fabulous book here. Unfortunately, I've only got the one copy. It's called Why Forgive. But I'm going to read you this last little paragraph in Why Forgive. Forgiveness is power. It frees us from every constraint of the past and helps us overcome every obstacle. It can heal both the forgiver and the forgiven. In fact, it would change the world if we allowed it to. Each of us holds the keys to forgiveness in our hands. It remains to us whether or not we choose to use them. I'm going to let you know about somebody that was pretty amazing. And he rang. He rang last night and he prayed for my lovely friend over there. He lives in Spain now, but he was the minister that first came to Dovegate Prison. Peter Douglas told me that when he'd heard that he'd got the position as chaplain, he brought his caravan from Scotland and parked it on the land, and he prayer walked every inch of what was being built. So he was praying for the footing, he was praying for the walls as they were coming up. He prayed for Dovegate. And he went to all the local churches and he introduced himself to the congregation and got them to pray for the place that would soon be full of men who needed prayer because they'd committed some terrible crimes. The very foundations of that prison was built on prayer. And as a result, there was many, many miracles. Men come to faith. Walk Ministries was founded on one of those men, Simon Edwards. And I know personally of at least 800 men coming through missions. And they were just wonderful. Can you imagine? You've got all these men, wonderful, strong Christians. And they're moved in their sentence. And they move to either other jails where they take their faith with them or they go out into, the, into home life and public life. And they need help when they reach that point. It's a very painful and difficult time when you reach the end of your sentence. It's almost as big a shop as when you get it. Well, I just thought that was an amazing time and this prison was built on prayer. I want to just share with you something that I think is important because it really talks about walking around and praying, and it is so important. I became a Christian, and about two or three years later, there was a mission in our local big town, Colchester. And those of us that are a bit older, I'm not looking at you, you're too young, um, might remember a singer called Helen Shapiro. Yeah? She was of Jewish descent, and she became a Christian and was sharing her story in this mission. So I went to it. But during the mission, they actually called out um, and said, is there any Christians that would like to be trained in sharing the gospel and working? And there was a, an evangelistic training schedule going on. And it was really good. 
So I went and I joined this organization called Through Faith Missions. And I used to go off on different missions here and there. Well, um, it, you know, we did Great Britain, Northern Ireland, we did all sorts of places. Well, one particular time, we were told we were going to do a mission and we we're looking for volunteers to go to Northern Ireland. I am a Guinness drinker. Northern Ireland and Mitch, we did pub evangelism. So we used to go in the pubs and we used to buy somebody a drink and you'd have a drink yourself standing at the bar and you'd actually share the gospel. Might be not quite that quickly. But anyway, what happened was this mission in Northern Ireland, Guinness, Guinness, it was tailor made for me. It was tailor made for me. So I'm like, right, I'm off. I volunteered and then I found out it was a dry mission. Was I gutted? Not only that, we got a fly. I hated flying. I never got on a plane without having had several stiff drinks. So to go on board a plane dry and fly with this fear of flying, I thought to myself, I can't do this. And I couldn't back out. Well, we had these sweatshirts. Where's my friend with the sweatshirt? These were our sweatshirts. Lovely. Right, you can stand both ways. The front part tells us it, it's, it was, uh, this one was the Two Rivers mission. But we had just, just like this, but our one got about the Irish mission. So turn around and look at that. How fantastic is that? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news? How beautiful are your feet when you bring good news? Thank you ever so much. While I'm sitting in this plane, now, looking around me, terrified, waiting for it to take off. But of course, we're all there. There's a whole crowd of us. So when I looked around the plane, all I could see was blue T-shirts and sweatshirts. I'm one that gets lost very easily. Don't matter where I go, can't set sat-navs right, do all sorts of things, I'm always lost. Well, this particular time, I looked around and I thought, I can't even get lost. If we die on this... I've got all these blue T-shirts to follow. I'll be right. I'll get there. So, I, And, you know, from that day on, I never have been frightened of flying. God took that fear away, and it was awesome. Fantastic. I want my readers to come now, because I want to... Uh, let's have you first. Uh, Mel, no, 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 it's not. I've got it wrong. Andrea, come on. <laughs> You've got the first one I want read. So, see, I haven't even started the sermon yet. We've only got to the scriptures. This is from Isaiah 52, 7 to 10, from the message version. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger bringing good news, breaking the news that all's well proclaiming good times, announcing salvation, telling Zion, your God reigns. Voices, listen, your scouts are shouting, thunderclap shouts, shouting in joyful unison. They see with their own eyes, God coming back to Zion. Break into song, boom it out, ruins of Jerusalem. God has comforted his people. He's redeemed Jerusalem. God has rolled up his sleeves. All the nations can see his holy, muscled arm. Everyone from one end of the earth to the other sees him at work, doing his salvation work. Thank you, Andrea. Andrea and I worked in prison together. We're buddies. What a privilege it was, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, can you come and read yours, please? This is Ephesians, Ephesians 6, is that better? It's 13 to 17. Right then. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish 
which you can extinguish all the flame, flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mel. I wanted you to hear those particular scriptures because you are going to be the feet that's carrying the good news. Prayer is the very essence of our relationship with Father. How blessed are we because it's a truly intimate and personal affair. And we have the promise of a wonderful eternal life following our death. Jesus did it all. He stood in our place for every single thing we've ever done wrong. For the stuff we mess up now and for anything that we do in the future, that doesn't give you carte blanche to go and do it all. But it does mean that when you slip up in the future, he's done it. Jesus paid on the cross with his life for ours for everything in the past, what we're doing at the moment, and everything in the future. It's a once for all people, for all time, offering of himself on the cross. And he died and went through it all for us. So that we've got that absolute confirmed conviction of where we're going. Now think, who in your life, just think of the people, bring their faces up, who in your life that you dearly love does not know God? What's going to happen to them? Precious people that we love are going to have a very different end to us. What can we do? We can give them a future. We can pray for them. Your prayers save lives. And I know that for a fact. Pray anytime. Pray when you're busy. And you may think, well, I haven't got time to stop and pray. Don't stop. Just include him in your daily business. I make mistakes all the time. I'm not a saint. You've just been hearing some of them. But I know my Redeemer lives. And I'm not alone in the messes I make of my life sometimes. We all make messes, and we will continue to make messes, even though we try hard not to. Some of us live alone, but those of us, like me, who have a close relationship with Father, are never truly alone. But you know, you can choose to be alone when we don't include God in our day-by-day -day living, whatever it is, and he can make the worst days better. And let's teach our children to pray in a personal way, to let them know how much they're loved by Jesus and that he encouraged them. He does. He encouraged them long ago and he encourages them still to come to him and talk with him. Well, to conclude, you may not have the luxury of lifting someone like Mr. Spider from certain death. But I want to leave you with a very scary thought, I'm afraid. What can we do when we see someone we care about heading towards the depths of hell? And I want to remind you that we can do something, and that something is to pray. Pray for them that an opportunity to hear the gospel and respond is put before them. It doesn't have to be you if you're shy, but pray for an opening for someone to tell them. Your prayers are an important part of this fight. And this is a fight, believe you me, and we're fighting Satan. Don't let's, let's mess up here. We're fighting Satan. So stand firm. 
Get your holy armor on and fight. You stand there. Our eternal life is a long time. And I used to use a little demonstration. I used to take a cotton reel and I'd stand in front of the lads and I'd take this cotton reel and I'd get the, the little bit between my finger and thumb and I'd say, this is the bit you're living now. This bit is your bit. And then I'd get the cotton wheel and I'd roll it out. And I said, that's eternity compared to that where you're spending it. Where are you spending it? I know one of the hardest things I've had since I became a Christian is to watch the people I love deny Christ, not even give him time of day. And I'm frightened for them. And if you're not sure, if you're not absolutely sure of where you're going, then possibly some of your friends aren't either. So I'm going to say that we're going to pray. There's going to be an opportunity for prayer after this. If you've got personal doubts about where you are, come for prayer. If you've got doubts about where your loved ones are going, come and get prayer. If you want to know uh, how you're going to get the strength to do it, come and get prayer, because everything starts with prayer. Please use this time and get all the prayer that you need, because we all need prayer. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, you never leave us. You're always there in our dark times and our good times. Please continue to hear our prayer, not just for ourselves, but for those we love and for those who don't know you in their lives. Guide us and them into true knowledge of you and all that you've done for us through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We have him to thank that he paid the price for all the messes we get ourselves into. Thank you that he sent the Holy Spirit to guide us each day until such time as when we can all come home to you and live out our everlasting life in your presence. Amen. <laughs>